Welcome back to episode 4 of our roguelike top-down dungeon game. Now, currently we've got the player being able to move, but they can go through walls at the moment, so we want to fix that, and that's going to be really important when we add our first enemy in today's video. So there's a really easy fix, we just go down to our wall, right-click, edit behaviours, we're just going to add the solid behaviour. We'll do that to both of them. And when paired with the eight directions, it means that our player can no longer go through these walls. So if we test that, we bounce over to our wall, and we can't go any further. So it's really good for keeping our player in certain parts of the game, making sure they can't leave the boundaries of the game. As you can see, we get this sort of bounciness sort of thing happen. That's just because of the way we've done our animation. So if you've done your animation properly, or proper animation frames, you kept the position the same. You shouldn't have this camera bounce, okay? So that was one of the drawbacks of using that sort of cheaty method. So let's add our first enemy to the game. So we're going to right click, insert new object, and just go down to sprites. And we're going to call this enemy. Click where you want it to be. And I'm just going to import one in. I'm actually going to take my player. I'm just going to reskin it to green. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to resize it. And I want this to be quite small, so I'm going to place them over here, like so. So I've got my enemy. Now, if I just play the game, he's not going to do anything. He's just going to sit there. I want him to be a bit of a pest and chase my player around the level. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give him two behaviors. So first behavior that I'm going to give him is line of sight. Now just make sure that he's only going to chase after the player if it can see the player. We can also adjust the adjust the views of how far he can see. So can he see across the whole map, or can he only see a short distance? That's really important for our enemies, so we're not just being attacked by them constantly, they're not always trying to chase us, only chasing us if they can see us, and we can adjust that distance. So let's add that. Second we're going to add is called Pathfinder. Pathfinder is really, really useful for enemies, so we're going to add that on there. And then from there we can start going into our event sheet. So we're going to add our first event. I'm going to use a system event, and we're going to do every X seconds. And this is how often the enemy is going to search for the player. So we'll set this to 0 0.1, just to begin with, and then you can adjust around this to get the look and feel you want for your enemy. I'm going to add another condition. I'm going to say enemy has line of sight to object, which is our player. Now if we click on the enemy and we look at its properties, you'll see that the obstacle is solid, so it can't see through solid objects, which is really important. So if we add some more walls down in between our player and our enemy, the enemy will not be able to see the player because the solid walls in the way. It's got a 360 cone view, which means you can see all the way around it, and its range is 10,000, which is a lot. So if we want to make it so that's much shorter, then obviously we need to adjust that. If we make it so it can see as long as there's not a wall in the way, and keep that the same. So now we've got that done, what we're going to do, we our enemy, we're going to scroll down to our pathfinding settings, and we're going to find a path. And we're going to find a path to the player's X position and the player's Y position. So looking for the player. Our next condition we're going to add is enemy. On path found, so the moment it finds a path, then what we're going to do is go enemy. I'm just going to get to follow that path. So move along path. And the pathfinding works on its own speed, so if you want your enemy to be slower, with just these. I also recommend turning off rotate objects. If not, you get some really weird things happening. Let's hit play and let's test it. So now you see that my enemy is moving towards the player. And it catches them quite quickly, so I would need some sort of weapon to keep up with that. Now I said that I set this to 0.1 seconds. If I increase this, let's say 0.5, instead of going straight to the player, you'll see that it's going to take a bit longer to get there. So let's have a look and see what happens. And you see it's sort of jumping always behind, because it's only looking for the player's position every 0.5 seconds. By that point, I've already moved on. So if I stay still, it'll then go straight on top of me and it'll stay there. So this gives you a very different behavior. If we make this number too low, you won't find a path before it's 
already you found a new one and it will just break your character so just be really aware of that when you're using that option final thing we're going to do is we're going to make it so the enemy mirrors itself depending on which direction it is so we just play it once more you'll see that enemy is always facing to the right which is a little bit strange we want it to face towards the player so really easy to do this we just add new events and we say enemy and scroll right down to compare x which is how far along the screen it is I'm going to say if this is greater than players x so if it's further on the screen the player then what we want to do is we want to do enemy and then we want to do set mirrored we can then copy and paste this and then we want to do less than or equal to the player's x position and then we set not mirrored so this will flip it back the way so now if we run it you'll see the enemy's facing towards me as soon as it gets to the other side it's going to look the other way this just makes our game feel so much nicer just feels a bit more natural so next video we'll start making it so this little guy can actually damage us and hurt us and then eventually we need to find a way to kill this little enemy as well